the LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts Icons Collectors Edition. <laughs> That was a mouthful. Then again, how else could you possibly describe this? This is indeed a collection of items from the popular franchise by JK Rowling, which takes us to a trip down memory lane to relieve a lot of moments from the Harry Potter series of books and movies. Oh, and this? Yeah, also part of the set. Harry Potter's glasses. This is where the build first takes us. Harry's glasses minus the usual cello tape, although you could add it yourself for extra realism. And I really like how the designer made them functional and foldable with the Technic hinges. The rims have these new elements I haven't seen before. Then there's Harry's wand. The scale feels very believable, measures around 35cm and has this nice weight to it. It's also very sturdy due to the way it's built, so you can wave it around all you want without the fear of it breaking. But the overall shape feels very bulky because of it. I feel that it should have been a bit slimmer. Also, I was unable to perform any magic with it, which is a shame, so I'll be complaining to LEGO customer services after this. There's this ball joint here which lets us connect the wand to the main structure of the set itself. Down here we can see the house scarf, an item that every Hogwarts student wears, and I went with Gryffindor's colors because I feel like a Gryffindor at heart. But the set also comes with extra parts for you to be able to build your scarf with the team colors you're most fond of. Black and yellow for Hufflepuff, grey and green for Slytherin, and grey and blue for Ravenclaw. It is made to look like it is underneath Tom Riddle's diary and not to Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. While it may look like you could probably take all of these elements apart, that's actually not the case, as this is built in such a way to always be connected, hiding a Technic frame underneath that holds everything together. But I do like the fact that it kinda looks like you could actually take the diary from under the pile and fold it like a real book. My favorite detail has to be the way the pages look, using a very clever building technique of trapping panel elements in the build. And even though I have seen the technique being used before in another LEGO set, it is still great to see it being used here. Next, we have two random books, again with very nice detailing, especially so on the pages, making good use of these 1x2 modified bricks, which only purpose is to support the build and hide the technique frame away. I think however this was a missed opportunity in such a set, as LEGO could probably have placed some stickers or prints and choose some actual books from the Harry Potter series like Hogwarts History, Quidditch Through the Ages, The Tales of Beedle the Bard, Advanced Potion Making and so many others to further increase the icon collector's feel of the set. There's some hidden meaning in the colors of the books however, with the red and gold being a reference to Gryffindor, the graphic designer Hogwarts House of Choice, and grey and blue being a reference to Ravenclaw, the model designer Hogwarts House of Choice. On top of the books there's a potion box from Hermione Granger, safe to assume from the initials in the printed element here, and it is over overall nicely detailed, but honestly the best part of it is actually the potion bottles inside. These look so cool together and I would not mind having these as a separate set altogether. There's also lots of meanings to all the stickers in the potions plus some easter eggs. Also the potion bottles are built using this new 4x4 transparent element which looks very useful and I can't wait to see it in other colors. The ghillie weed was used by Eri in the Triwizard tournament from Goblet of Fire to breathe underwater. There's also a hidden birthday from the first son of one of the set graphic designers and the number 4701 has to do with LEGO set 4701, the very first LEGO Harry Potter set released 20 years ago. The Polyjuice potion was used countless times throughout the Harry Potter series and I really like the loose 1x1 one one round plates in there. The label has the Hermione Granger initials again and there's also a birthday here from another kid of the graphic designer. The number 2984 came directly from the reference material the graphic designers used to create the labels. The War Mood infusion potion is very similar to the previous one and there's the even birthday from the other graphic designer that worked on the set. On the back there's another reference number P349. According to the model designer somebody messed up as this was supposed to be P394, one of the lines from Snape in Prisoner of Azkaban where he tells the students turn to page 394. Finally we have the powdered root of Asphodel. The first thing Snape ever told Harry Potter was what would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? So that's a cool easter egg in there, and we can find Marcus Bessa birthday here, the model designer of the set, alongside with number 28 which has a lot of personal meaning for him and his family. There's also an extra potion, Felix Felicis, more commonly known as Liquid Luck featured in the Alfblood Prince. And while the elements from which this is built may look like white to the naked eye, they are actually glow-in-the-dark elements. Attached to the potion box there's a model of a golden snitch, a very iconic item from the main sport of the series, 
Quidditch, with a very interesting technique to achieve the round shape and a very good choice of elements for the wings, using two of the LEGO Hot Hair Balloon elements. In front of all of these there's the Hogwarts Letter of Acceptance, a simple build made out of three printed 8x16 tentiles with the Hogwarts crest, the acceptance text and signed by Professor McGonagall. It's a nice touch that there's actually blank space in here so that you can fill out your name if you wish to. The Hogwarts crest however does have a mistake on the motto here. The last word should read Titilandus with the letter U instead of letter O there at the end. Now undoubtedly the main focus of the whole set is this magnificent Edwig build, Harry Potter's personal pet owl. The model really stands out and at first I was actually scared about the build being somewhat flimsy and having lots of ugly gaps and joints showing, considering the amount of detail, different parts and unnatural angles the build has. But surprisingly it was nothing like that. The build is quite sturdy and even though the wings and individual feathers are attached with ball joints to the owl main body, you hardly see any of that and all of the connection points are well disguised as details and texture from the wings themselves. The head build was very clever in the way the eyes are attached and the overall expression is spot on. It can actually be turned to the position you like best. The wings are locked in place but the individual feather builds can be adjusted individually by a very small degree. The same goes for the feathers in the tail. It is a completely different style of model when compared to the kinetic Edwig from last year but so much better looking in my opinion. This is another part of the build which could have been a standalone model in its own right and would very likely prove to be a very popular set I'm pretty sure. It might be hard to tell from the video but this thing is actually quite big for a Lego model. Now we go significantly smaller in scale to look at the chocolate frog, a common magical sweet that characters often eat in the series. I quite like the model overall and the legs can be somewhat posed. Now I kinda want to build this in green as I feel it would look like a somewhat real realistic frog. The choice of elements inside the mouth kinda make it look like it has teeth, which feels wrong for frogs but it is such a minor thing that I'm just nitpicking at this point. The final elements of the Yogurt's Icon Collector's Edition set are the minifigures. We get an exclusive 20th anniversary golden Professor McGonagall minifigure with very nice printed details in the front, golden wand and the 20 years print in the back. Same goes for Agrid, one of the most important characters of the series, now in golden form, complete with his pink golden umbrella. It also has the 20 years back printing. And finally, Professor Dumbledore. He is done in the same style as the former two minifigures, but he has a special display of its own, which is meant to represent the chocolate frog cards, card collection from Harry Potter series, which features enchanted portraits of famous witches and wizards. It even comes with a printed 1x4 slope with his name and the technique used to make the purple pentagon is actually quite clever. You can place Dumbledore's card in this special stand that comes with this 2x4 print with Lego Harry Potter. There's also stands for Professor McGonagall and Agrid that connect to the main stand, but included in the set there's also these extra stands that let you expand these to include more minifigures. This is actually brilliant because some of the 2021 Lego Harry Potter sets also come with golden minifigures, 6 in total released so far which are actually the available spots provided with the stand extensions. So for the big Harry Potter fans that have been collecting all of the golden minifigures, now there's actually a very good looking stand to display them all. I had a lot of fun with this set. Despite having some points of the build where it was a bit repetitive like the two similar books and all of Edwig's feathers, the set was super enjoyable to build. There were clever building techniques, we get to build lots of different kinds of builds from potion bottles to a giant owl, a small frog to Lego books, etc. And the part selection is also very good. This feels like the type of Lego set that could appeal to people who are not into Lego at all because of the way the box art is displayed feels very adult oriented and also the lack of classical minifigures makes this look less childish than your usual Lego Harry Potter sets. For people who are into Lego Harry Potter already this will be a must have and probably even for people who like new building experiences and want to try something different. This is clearly a displayed piece and if you're thinking about getting it you might need to consider if you have enough room to display it or not. This set also opens the door for a very interesting new type of Lego product. If this does well in the market we may very well see a Lego Harry Potter Hogwarts Icons Collector's Edition Part 2. And what does this mean for other Lego themes? What would be the Star Wars version of this concept or the Marvel one? Thank you LEGO for sending this early copy to review and thank you for watching the video. I would love to hear what you guys think about the set in the comment section below and I will see you guys on the next one.